Yes, guys, turn to problem number 17 and let's start. Summarized balance sheet of RNR Limited as on 31st December 2011 is as follows. So there are two types of shares. One is a 10 rupee share fully paid up, and another one is a 6 rupee share fully paid up. Don't make your assumptions. No assumptions now because I have different nominal value. So I have to go for equivalent number of shares. Yep. On the assets side, I have a goodwill, fixed assets, intangible assets, and other tangible assets, miscellaneous expenses. Fixed assets are worth 24 lakhs. Very good. So the value of fixed assets is given to you, realizable value. Other tangible assets are revalued at 3. Okay, so that 5 became 3. The company is expected to settle the disputed bonus claim of 1 lakh rupees not provided in the books of account. Guys, it is not provided only. So there is no liability for that. So remember guys, when there is no liability, if you are creating a liability, your profit also should be reduced by 1. What is the entry for a provision for bonus? p and l account debit to provision. P and L account debit. You are debiting the P and L. It means you are reducing the profits. Then provision for bonus having a credit balance will come on the liability side. To create a liability, compulsorily I have to debit the P and L. So when I am debiting the P and L, automatically my profits get reduced. So current year profit should be reduced by 1 lakh. Goodwill appearing in the balance sheet is a purchase goodwill. Very good. That means you can consider that as goodwill. It is considered reasonable to increase the value of goodwill guys increase that means he's talking about five plus something so five what is already there he'll keep it because it is a purchase goodwill it is considered reasonable to increase plus by an amount equal to the average of book value what is the book value five so amount equal to the average of five and valuation made on three years purchase of super profits so basically it should go something like this so your goodwill should be five plus 5 plus the goodwill you get value now divided by 2. This is what he is saying. Goodwill is considered reasonable to be increased by an average of book value plus average of goodwill valued on super profits basis. What is he talking about? What super profits? How many years? 3 years purchase of average super profits of last 4 years. So we need to get this valuation. Then I will identify what is the goodwill to be considered. Achala. How do we consider 4 years profits are given to you? Yes. 2009, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11. 3 years profits and 3 years dividend is also given to you. Normal expectation of an industry to which the company belongs is 10%. Akbar holds 20,000 shares of 10 rupees each and 10,000 shares of 6 rupees each fully paid up. He wants to sell his holding. So determine what is the breakup value and the market value of both kinds of shares. And he is also asking what is the fair value of share. Put on heading fair value and write down the formula. Fair value per share. Is equal to net asset value per share. Plus dividend yield value per share divided by 2. It's a simple average of net assets value and dividend yield value. So, first you need to calculate net assets value or breakup value, then you need to calculate dividend yield value, take an average, and you get fair value of a share. Uh, that's all he is being asked. So, let's check. What do we start with first? To get the net assets, we need to first value goodwill. To get the goodwill valuation, we said it is 5 plus 5 plus some goodwill valuation based on super profits divided by 2. So first let's identify what is that goodwill as per super profits method. And once we identify that, then we can start calculating what is your net assets value. So keep it very simple. There is only one adjustment to the profits. What is that one adjustment to profit? That is nothing but the bonus claim. Bonus of 1 lakh should be deducted from current year profit. What is current year profit given? 2011 profit is 4.1. This 4.1 should be reduced by that 1 lakh. So the balance will be 3.1. That is current year profits after adjustment for bonus claim. Now, is there any trend after taking that? No. Because it will be 3, 3.54 increase. 4.1 has now become 3.1 suddenly decrease. So there is no trend. We can directly go for a simple average of profits. So let's start. 
put down a heading computation of goodwill. Or valuation of goodwill based on super profits method. What are the three determinants of goodwill? FMP, average capital employed, and NRR. NRR is given to you? Yes, down below. Normal expectation of the industry to which the company belongs is 10%. NRR is given. So what are the two things I have to calculate? FMP and average capital employed. So let's start always with FMP. That should be the first working note. Future maintainable profits. Future maintainable profits. There is no adjustment to FMP at all. If you observe... There is nothing which is said you know, in future there will be an increase in tax rate, decrease in the profits. Nothing. There is no tax adjustment which is given to you. All that one adjustment that is given to you is regarding your bonus claim. So, let's check first corrected profits of 2011. An adjustment is there to 2011. So let's calculate corrected profits. Come on. I'll start with profits given. What the profit given is? 4.1. Adjustment less. Provision for bonus. There's no liability for bonus which is provided. So, bonus claim deduction is 1. So, corrected profits of 2011 is 3.1. Now, you have 4 years profits, not showing any trend. So, average profits. Average profits of 4 years. This average profits of 4 years can also be called as now FMP. Can I get the average? 3 plus 3.5 plus 4 plus 3.1 divided by 4. And my answer. 3.4 FMP Next determinant Average capital employed How do we get average? Calculate closing Deduct half of current year profits Where is half of current year profits? Current year profit is 3.1 Half of that is 1.55 So let's start Start with your closing capital employed Terminal capital employed. There are adjustments. Consider, consider and do. Terminal capital employed. All rupees are in lakhs. You are also everything in lakhs. Let's start. First, assets. One by one. First asset. Yep, I will start with fixed assets. I cannot take goodwill for goodwill valuation. Fixed assets. Instead of 15, now I will take 24. Other tangible assets. Given there, given, given below. Check, check, check. Other tangible asset is 3. Next. Intangible asset. If you observe something is given written below. After the word intangible I said he clearly said it is at market value. That means I don't have to take any change in the valuation. Will I take miscellaneous expenses? Miscellaneous expenses are fictitious assets. Fictitious assets will not have any value. That's it. Total assets are 30. Next. 
deduct outside liabilities from this. First one, oh, there's only one. Outside liability, is there any settlement value given? No, one second guys. There are two things. First one is other liabilities of 10. And now we have created one more outside liability that is provision for bonus. Bonus claim is then 1, 11. So my closing capital employed or terminal capital employed is 19, 30 minus 11, A minus B. How do you get average? Less. Half of current year profits. Can I calculate? Where is current year profit? We have corrected it. 3.1. So 1 by 2 into 3.1 is 1.55. Deduct averages. Average capital employed. Seventeen point four five. Like valuation of goodwill. How do we get super profits? Compare FMP and normal profits. FMP, we already have FMP. Everything is in lakhs again. FMP 3.4. Then normal profit. Normal profits is 10% of 17.45, 1.745. Then my super profit is 1.655. Sufficient to get goodwill now. What is the goodwill valuation? 3 years purchase, then value of goodwill, 3 years purchase, What we need to do is valuation of share now. Intrinsic value method. Breakup value is what he said. Anything. Use whatever it is. Value per share. Breakup value method. I already have closing capital employed. Don't start with all assets. Unnecessarily don't do anything. So, we can start with this. Anyways, this is assets minus outside liabilities. I'll start with this 19 and I'll go on. So, terminal capital employed. Start with 19. Next. What is that that we did not consider in calculating terminal capital employed? Goodwill. Non-trade investments, preference share capital. No non-trade investments existing, no preference shares existing. Only one adjustment that I have to take to us is only the value of goodwill. How will you get goodwill valuation? 5 plus. He clearly said, what is that? Goodwill appearing in the balance sheet is a purchased goodwill. It is considered reasonable to increase the value of goodwill by an amount equal to average of book value and valuation made on 3 years purchase. Average of book value plus valuation made on 3 years purchase 4.965 divided by 3. Let's 
This is 9.9825. I'm sorry, yeah, this is divided by 2. No preferential capital to be deducted. So directly we can get the answer. This is net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Twenty-eight point nine eight two five divided by number of shares. How will you get number of shares here? There are no partly there are no uh, partly paid share. Both are fully paid shares, but it is ten rupees and six rupees different nominal value. So I'll get equal and number of shares. Equivalent number of shares. How do you get equivalent number of shares? Total paid up value divided by anything. Total paid up value number of equivalent shares of rupees 10 each. I'm calculating of rupees 10. Then divided by 10. What is the total paid up value? 10 plus 6. 16. 16 divided by 10. 1.6. Then we get value per share of rupees 10. How much? You can calculate value per share of rupees 6 from this. Rupees 6, what do you do? Into 6 by 10. Calculate. What is value per share of rupees 10? 18.11. This 18.11 into 6 by 10 will give you a value of Yep, 10.866. This is net assets value or breakup value per share. We got one part of the answer that is net assets value or the breakup value that he asked. To get the fair value, I also need dividend yield value. So let's try to calculate dividend yield value and then we'll go for the average of it. So I'll go for dividend yield valuation. Guys, dividends are in ratios. Dividends are in an increasing trend. Check 11, 12, 13, 14. Increasing trend. So you can take simple or weighted average. So put down heading dividend yield valuation method. Get average dividend. Don't take simple average. Take weighted average because the years are given and also the percentages are given in an increasing trend. Year 2008, 9, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 14 percentages. Weights, highest weight to the recent year and lowest weight to the earliest year, 1, 2, 3, 4. Total weight is 10. Weight into dividend percentage. 11, 24, 39, and 56. This two combined is 80. This is 50, 130. 
so my average dividend percentage is 13 130 by 10 so calculate value per share value per share use the formula dps by nrr so value per share of rupees 10 fully paid up if it is a rupee 10 share how do you get dps 13 percent into 10 rupees divided by nrr is 10 percent 13 rupees Value per share of rupees six fully paid up. Thirteen percent dividend on six rupee share dividend per share. NRR being ten percent. This will give you seven point eight. Intrinsic value method calculations. Dividend yield method calculation. Take a simple average, you get fair value, fair value per share. Fair value per share of rupees 10 fully paid up. Take a simple average of both. What is the net asset valuation? 18.11. What is your dividend yield valuation? 13. 18.11 plus 13 divided by 2. I think this is 15.5655.5 or something. Actually. Of rupees 6 fully paid up. Ten point eight six six plus seven point eight divided by two. It should be nine point three three three. So you got net assets value, you have dividend yield value, then you found out the fair value. That is what he asked. Yes guys, go for the next one. Problem 18. The following is the balance sheet of N Limited. As on 31st March 2012. I have 4 lakh shares of 10 rupees each fully paid up 40 lakhs. And I have 13.5 preference shares of 100 rupees each 20 lakhs. Guys, if you observe there is only one kind of equity shares which are fully paid up. There is no partly paid share, no assumptions, nothing. Just keep the problem simple. There are adjustments. Read. Return on capital employed is 20% in a similar business. That is your NRR. Your fixed assets are worth 30% more than the book value. And stock is overvalued by 1 lakh. Overvalued means it's already valued up. It is to be overvalued means you have to increase. It's already overvalued. You have to reduce. Debtors are to be reduced by 20,000. Trade investment which constituted 10% of the total investments are valued 10% below cost. That means the balance 90% are non-trade investments. The trade investments were purchased on 1-4-2011 and 50% of the non-trade investments were purchased on 1-4-2010 
and the balance were purchased on 1-4-2011. Non-trade investment yielded a return of 15% on cost. That will give you the return on non-trade investments to be deducted for the valuation of goodwill. In 2009-10, a new machinery was purchased for 2 lakhs which was wrongly charged to revenue. That means he put it to your P&L account. But it should be adjusted, the amount should be adjusted by taking a depreciation at the rate of 10% on reducing balance method. In 2010-11, furniture with a book value of 1 lakh was sold for, 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 for 60,000. Understand guys, there is a 40,000 rupees of loss on furniture. Furniture is a fixed asset. Fixed assets are not normally held for sale. So whenever I am getting a loss on sale of such a fixed asset, it is a non-recurring item. So such a non-recurring loss should be added back. So in the year 2010-11, for the purpose of calculating goodwill, two years purchase of super profits based on a simple average profits. Very clearly he is given simple average. So don't bother about being, taking it as a weighted average basis. For the last four years should be considered. Profit for the past 4 years is given to you as 16 lakhs, 18 lakhs, 21 lakhs and 22 lakhs. Guys, there is a correction which we have to do from the profits. We will take care of that. Additional depreciation should be provided at the rate of 10% on the additional value of plant and machinery alone for considering the average profits. Guys, so calculation of FMP, we need to take additional depreciation on revaluation because check there is a revaluation of fixed asset 30% above the book value. On that 30%, we need to take an additional depreciation at the rate of 10%. So, only on the plant and machinery, not on any other asset. So, let's start. First, let's start with the corrected profits. Then, we'll go into the goodwill calculation. Then, we are actually asked to calculate what is your intrinsic value, ignoring income tax and dividend rate. So, let's start with corrected profits. Put on adding corrected profits. Then, we can go for FMP calculation. One computation of corrected profits. Computation of corrected profits. I have four years. Let's place them under columns two thousand eight nine. Two thousand nine ten, two thousand ten eleven, and two thousand eleven twelve. That's it. Four years. Let's start with the profits given. I'm ignoring tax. Is clearly given. Profits given are sixteen lakhs, eighteen lakhs. 21 lakh and 22 lakhs. These are the profits available. Let's go for the adjustments one by one. Come to the first adjustment. Profit fixed assets, sorry, return on capital employed is 20%. That is the NRR. I won't be considering now. Fixed assets are worth 30% more than the book value. It will not increase your profits in any way. Stock is overvalued by 1 lakh. If you reduce stock, what happens to the profit? Profit will also reduce. So, first one, stock. Let's put it as adjustments. Under adjustments, first one is stock. Stock adjustment Year is not given, so I am taking it as current year. Closing stock, reduce it by 1 lakh. Next, debtors to be reduced by 20,000. Debtors, whenever you are reducing, it means it is a loss again. 20,000 reduce the profit. Debtors. 
Then the next point is regarding non-trade investment income. Guys, non-trade investment income is not for corrected profits. It's an adjustment for FMP. So, Pagadi side. Next, 2009. Next, point number 4. Now, we have an adjustment for machinery. Check. Machinery in 2009-10 was wrongly charged to PNL for 2 lakhs. In 2009-10, so what happens? I'll increase the profits now because earlier I have reduced the profits by debiting it to PNL. But do not forget to give depreciation on this machinery. Impact of depreciation to be given on a WDB basis at the rate of 10%. Guys, that's why he did not write per annum. The reason why he did not write per annum is when was this purchase? He never know. So when I am not writing per annum, that means irrespective of the number of months, we have to take full year depreciation. 10%. First year, 20,000. 18,000 and 16,200. Depreciation, reduce the profits. Point number 5. It's a non-recurring item, an adjustment only for FMP. I will not consider now. That's it. Story ends then. This is corrected profits for us. First year as it is 16 lakhs, no change. Next year it is 17 lakh 80,000. Next year, sorry, it is 19 lakh 80,000. Next year it is 20 lakhs 82,000. And the final year will come to 20 lakhs 63,200. To get FMP, I need two more adjustments which I left out saying that they are not current year corrected profits. So two adjustments. The first one is return on non-trade investment. Second one is a non-recurring loss on sale of furniture. So let's try to consider these two so that we get profits for computation. Yep. Go on. Give an adjustment for return on non-trade investments now. Return on non-trade investments. Check guys, read that point very carefully. Point number 3. Guys, from point number 2, last sentence, he says, the trade investments which constituted 10% of the total investment. That means, non-trade investments are the balance 90%. Investment total is 16 lakhs. If 10% is 1 lakh 16, 90% is 14 lakh 40,000. What is he saying for this 14 lakh 40,000? He says that the trade investments were purchased on 1-4-2011. I'm law least to bother about that. Think about non-trade. 50% of the non-trade investments were purchased on 1-4-2010. So when will I get the profit? Return on non-trade investment, I'll receive in 2010-11. In 2010-11, I will be receiving a return at the rate of 15%. But this 15% should be calculated on what? On 90% of investments. That is non-trade. So that is 14,40,000. Total non-trade that is. Of this 50% was only purchased by then. Remaining 50% was purchased in next year. So, out of 14,40,000, 50% was purchased this year, yielding a return of 15%. <coughs> My return on non-trade investment to be deducted is, yep, 1,8,000. Guys, obviously next year he purchased that remaining 50. So, what will happen? The return will exactly double. Next one is non-recurring loss. Loss.
loss on sale of furniture. Which year? How much is the loss and which year is the loss? In 2010-11, that is in that year, they sold it for 60 when the book value was 1 lakh. So in the year 10-11, I made a loss of 40, non-recurring loss added back. That's it. Balance are 16 lakhs. No change. 19 lakh 80. This one changes there. Deducted by 68,000. 20 lakh 14,000. Next one. 18 lakhs. 57,800. What average? Simple or weighted? There is no trend and especially he clearly gave simple average profits. Oh my. Average profits. is equal to strike simple average add everything divided by 4 18 lakhs 18 lakhs 60,450 that is your average of profits. One more adjustment to get FMP. One last adjustment to get FMP is point number seven, 8. Is it 8 or 7? Seven? 7. Read the point number 7. You will get last adjustment to get the FMP. Provide additional depreciation on the increase Point number one is saying, point number two is saying, fixed assets are 30% more than the book value. Now he is saying, charge a 10% additional depreciation on the increase of plant and machinery. So let's reduce less. Depreciation on revaluation of plant and machinery. Come on. How much depreciation? 10%. Of what was the book value of plant and machinery? 22 lakhs. Plus already existing 22 plus check. 2 lakhs machinery depreciated by these values. So the balance amount which will be left out is 1 lakh. 47,800 I guess. Increased by 30%. 145,800. 145, 100 into 30%. That is an increase into 10% depreciation value of depreciation is 70374 this is FMP. Sixteen lakhs, sorry, seventeen lakhs, ninety thousand zero seven six. Once you got the FMP, what is the next determinant of goodwill? How is the goodwill being valued? The goodwill should be taken on super profits, two years purchase of super profits. So to get the super profits, I need capital employed. I need average capital employed to be more specific. To 
get average capital employed, start with your assets. Start with the assets. Each fixed asset should be increased by 30%, building 24 lakhs plus 30%. 31 lakh 70 sorry 31 lakh 20 thousand machinery we just calculated 22 lakh plus 1 lakh 45 800 into 130 percent Three zero four nine five four zero. Three zero four nine five four zero. This is nothing but twenty two lakhs plus one lakh forty five eight hundred into one thirty. Next one furniture added by thirty percent. 13 lakhs vehicles eighteen lakhs plus thirty percent is five lakh forty twenty three lakh forty investments only trade investment should be considered Trade investments are 10% of the investment. 16 lakhs into 10% is 1 lakh 60. And he's also saying in the point number 2, they are valued at 10% below cost. So 10% below cost means 10% of 16 lakhs minus 10% is 1 lakh 44,000. Next, stock reduced by 1 lakh, balance stock is only 10 lakhs. Next, debtors, we have reduced them by 20,000, now debtors will be 17 lakh 80. And the final one, bank balance is 3 lakhs 20,000. And that will close up to total of assets. Reduce outside liabilities from this. Go in the reverse manner for outside liabilities. My outside liabilities are creditors. Next outside liability is bills payable. And the next outside liability is bank loan. Place the figures, check the balance sheet and pick up the figures. Yes guys, the creditor figure being 31 lakhs, 
bills payable being 6 lakhs, your bank loan being 12 lakhs, my total of liabilities is coming to 49 lakhs. Total your assets and get closing capital employed. From this closing capital employed, we deduct less half of current year profits. This is 1 by 2 into current year profits are corrected current year profits take. 2063800 and that will arrive at our average capital employed. Get the answers? Check the figures guys, we should be right. Once you got the figures, you know average capital employed, you know FMP, you know NRR, NRR is already given to you in the point number 1 as 20%. So let's compute then. Goodwill by super profits. FMP you start with that 17 lakh 90,000 FMP sorry 9076 compare this with normal profit normal profit is 71 lakh 21,640 into NRR being 20% so this should be 14 lakhs 24,328 that will give us super profit 3 lakhs 65,000 748 How many years purchase is goodwill? 2 So multiplied by 2 this will be 7 lakhs 31,496 Guys you can round it off to 731,500 also if you want no problem I mean 400 rupees of sorry 4 rupees of difference fine I leave that option to you if you want you can take it as fine but I can guarantee you that your figures will not be so round round also but still it's better to take it as 500 now what we need to calculate from this value is what is the breakup value that is what he asked intrinsic value per share so I need net assets attributable to equity shareholders. From here the problem becomes very simple. Once you have the figure of goodwill, the problem is damn easy guys. So, 
इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू पर शेयर वॉट आर द डिटर्मिनेंट्स फर्स्ट वन नेट एसेट्स एट्रीब्यूटेबल टू इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स वाई अगेन स्टार्ट विथ एसेट्स वाई अगेन डिडक्ट विथ लाइबिलिटीज वी ऑलरेडी हैव क्लोजिंग कैपिटल एम्प्लॉय स्टार्ट विथ दैट क्लोजिंग और टर्मिनल कैपिटल एम्प्लॉय वॉट एवर मी मीन इट इज द सेम my closing capital employed is 81 lakh 53540 three adjustments what are those three adjustments always check for goodwill check for non trade investments check for preference share capital and their dividend so go on first one goodwill Add goodwill seven lakhs thirty one thousand four ninety six or five hundred anything is fine. Next, non trade investments. Ninety percent of total investments because ten percent is trade, so it should be fourteen lakh forty. There is no particular change in the value, so you can directly take the value as. 14 lakh 40. It is nothing but 16 lakhs. My total investments minus 10% being trade investments. Finally, final deduction comes for less preference share capital being 20 lakhs. There is no arrears of dividend to be considered, guys. So I am not taking that. So I have come down to net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Net assets attributable to equity shareholder is 83 lakhs 24. Sorry, 20. Yeah, 25,036. Check the value. I hope that's right. You know number of shares four lakhs. Now get the value. Number of equity shares four lakhs. Then finally, intrinsic value per share. Is twenty point eight one. Continue. I'll leave it there, but actually it should continue. Eight one two. Yeah. And that will bring us to the end of the problem.